Oh hey, welcome back. Today I'll show you how I turn 3D models into 2D sprites that you can use in Easy FPS Editor. So I've used this technique for these two enemies here. I did this one earlier. Here he is. The first thing you do is go to Sketchfab. I found some really cool models here made by Protofactor Inc. And I'm not entirely sure if I can actually use their models in the way I'm going to, but hopefully I can. So I'm going to choose this dude, Rapax. I'm going to use this as my demonstration model. There he is. First thing I do is turn um, post processing off so the shadow is gone. It'll just be easier later on. Make him full screen. You just have to imagine how the creature is going to look in your game. So you want him to kind of be facing you like this. Find like a really good angle that'll look good as sprite. So I'm guessing this looks this looks pretty good. He's facing me. I make sure his feet are lined up as if he's standing on the ground. Then just put him in a good spot. What we need is 13 sprites for all the different animations. And we need the idle one first, and then four sprites for moving. So we already have our idle sprite here. What I do is just make sure the screen's clear, and then I press the print screen key on my keyboard, take a screenshot. Then I go out of here, and I use this program, Irfan View. I'm just going to open a new one here. And then I paste and then just crop them out and save. Here's my entities folder. I'm just gonna make a new folder quickly. Enemy Rapax. I'm guessing that's his name. And then I'll name him Enemy Rapax as well. I'm gonna number them. You could name them like Idle, Attack, all of that. But I find it easier just to number them like this. So we'll do this until we have 13 of them. Let's begin. It's kind of a time consuming process. Now I need some moving sprites of him walking. So I'll just see if I can find them here. There we go. He kind of walks funny. We need four sprites. So there's the first one. Take a screenshot. Paste and crop out. Save. Enemy Rapex 2. Save. And then we look for the next three sprites. We'll do that one. Screenshot. Paste. Cut them out. So, yeah, this does take quite a while, but I think it's worth it. You'll see the end result later. Now we just need two more sprites. There's the next... There's the next step. Screenshot. And repeat the process. Then we just need one more. There we go. And that'll be the... Last frame of his walking animation. Cut it out. Save. Enemy Rapex 5. So now we have our idle and our four walking frames. What's next? Attack. Attack is two frames. Pain is two. Death is three. And then corpse is one. So now we're looking for attack and pain. There we go. So we'll do this one as like a wind up. Frame one. frame 2. So there's the wind up and then there's the follow through. Yeah, I guess that'll do. And then we need the pain him getting hit. There's a good one. Yeah, hit 1 over here. And then getting hit 2. There. 
Look at him, he's in pain. Cool. Then we just need three frames for the death animation. Yeah, we'll do one of him standing, one on his knee, and one going down. He's very dramatic, as you can see. Then next one will be him going down on his knee. And then the last frame for the death animation will be him on the ground. Or him just falling like that. But there we go. Almost there. This is the most time consuming part of the process. Well, yeah. There's another time consuming part coming next. Cool, it's him dying, and then we just need the last one of him being being a corpse. That's a good one. Cool, and that part's done. Now we have all the frames we need. So then, the next most time consuming part, you go to remove.bg to remove the background and then sadly you have to add them one by one which is great so patience is key cool so we have all 13 of our sprites with the background gun then we start downloading. There is a max quality one that you have to pay for, but I'm cheap. So we go free. And since this game engine is for like retro looking games, it's actually fine to download in a smaller quality. So it's no problem there. We have everything downloaded, got all our frames ready with the backgrounds gone. So we can close that. We can close this for now too. Let's just close all of that. So we can delete those ones and then replace them with these. There we go. Now there's probably a faster way to do this, but I don't know how. So this will take some time too. Cool, so we have our, all 13 of our sprites ready with the background gun. And here comes a very important part. I use a sprite. Then we go and open our new sprites. We just spent so much time on. And if you name them like this, if they numbered like this, then I can just click on the first one and it'll automatically load the rest of them up, which is great. Here we go. All our animations. Basically when you're done adjusting what will adjust now, you have to make sure that the canvas, the width and the height matches up so that you have a perfect square. Otherwise the enemy will look like stretched. You will look quite stretched when you add them to your game. So you have to make sure you have a perfect square and the width and height need to match up. But the first step is to use your move tool. We just need to take our enemy and drag him all the way to the bottom of the canvas. Otherwise, if you have this open space here, when you put him in the engine, it'll look like he's floating. So just drag him down to the bottom of your canvas as much as you can without cutting anything off. There we go. That should do. And then just repeat the process for all of them. And then just kind of make sure that they lined up nicely. You don't want them like all the way off to the side here. You want them kind of in the middle. Same with each frame. So I think you can go 
go a bit more to the right there. Yeah, that looks good. And same with all of them. There we go. So a trick is just to look at the feet and just kind of see if they line up nicely. Yeah, that's not bad. Foot's basically in the same place. And then same with this next one. Bring the foot down. Make sure they're lined up. There we go. That looks, that looks fine. So I'm basically just looking at his giant toenail here and making sure they line up. Make sure it lines up with the other toenail. See, it works nicely. The toenail technique. So I'm just seeing like this is in these squares here. So then I go to the next one and bring it down there as well. But now I'm looking at the other foot to make sure I don't cut that toenail off. You don't want to cut these toenails. You want them long for extra damage. So once everything is lined up nicely and you have your creature as close to the bottom of the canvas as you can, you see we need all the space here for his long arms. So I guess we can bring the canvas in a little bit. Like there. And there. Just want to check that nothing else is cut off. Cool. So that's as long as it needs to be. The width will be 806. So then just make sure that the height is also 806. Otherwise, he will look stretched later on don't want that and since we spent all this time moving him to the bottom of the canvas just adjust it here until it's 806 there we go so again I stress that this is very important make sure the width and the height match up that is all now we can export these frames I'll just make a new folder in here called final as in final result and save it as a PNG we're ready so then we come back to the engine go to enemy settings type in your monster's name my monster's name is Rapax import sprites and then go to final and this is why I number them as well just so it's easier I know that's one that's two three four and so on perfect now I he doesn't have a projectile and I like the default blood that comes with this engine, so I'm not going to change it. And he doesn't have projectiles. I'll keep everything else pretty much default. Uh, attack delay will be 0 0.5, so he attacks kind of quickly. And he does damage, maybe like 10, because he's strong. And then we set the scale. He's humongous, so we will make him 0 0.25. Yeah. Cool. And then we have our new creature. I'll put him in this room. I made just for him. Let's test it out. Grab your trusty sword and crossbow. And this crossbow and the sword were also um, 3D models on Sketchfab that I just turned into 2D sprites too. So you can do it for enemies and for weapons. So let's see. Mr. Rapex, there he is. 
His walk does look kind of funny, but you can see he's got the attack animation, and it hurts. It's pretty sore. And let's see the hurt animation. There we go. That works too. Let's see the death animation. There it is. Cool. So I was a bit nervous for the corpse sprite. It's pretty big, but uh, that's fine. It's good enough for me. That's how you make 2D sprites from 3D models. Just like that. I did the same for this guy as well. My crossbow is not working. Cool. Thanks for watching, dude. If you have any questions, let me know. Or if you want, if you want to see tutorials on anything specific, let me know too. And have a good day.